therefore we had now a country that uh, had very different settings than the rest of uh, the Eurozone and has 165% of GDP. So we had to solve the issue of Greece and its sovereign debt. And we did it in the circumstances you all know about. And one circumstance was quite heavy, which is to include private sector. You can, of course, discuss that. Should we, shouldn't we have done that? to take up 100 uh, billion euros of losses. And this is a debate that we can have, but the decision was taken. The one thing that is clear is that Greece now has come back to a track that uh, will allow it to bring its debt down to 120% of GDP and a new government willing to take all the measures so as to stay within the club. And we trust the Greek government. But we, at the same time, lost the confidence in the euro and put within the euro because we asked banks, investors, to take up their share of the burden. So this is the first reason. The second reason being has also a name, and this is convergence or lack of convergence. In the 17 countries of the Eurozone, we have uh, situations that um, some have diverging developments compared with the Eurozone. And that, of course, destroys trust. Because, rightfully so, economists and markets and analysts ask themselves how can 17 countries live with one currency and economies that are very diverse as far as their competitive framework is concerned. So we have a lot of work on that account. And some say you are much too slow. And it's true. We are not working at a market rhythm. Why? We are not the market. We are 17 democracies. They have a different rhythm. And when I think at my American uh, friends and the difficulties they had to find a solution between Congress and the President of the United States of America, please bear a second with us when you have 17 democracies that need to adopt all of them, difficult measures. So that means in every country you need to have a democratic debate and then 17 countries together need to find a common solution. And we managed within that very long night and we adopted five words being key words as rules. First of all, convergence. There is no future for the euro if there is no convergence between our economies. Two, discipline. It's not to please Angela Merkel, but if there is no discipline, that is sovereign debt is arising and that is not possible and this is not sustainable. Third, sustainability. Because if there is convergence and discipline, then it will be sustainable. Fourth, integration. Integration, because all that I said, convergence, discipline, sustainability, integration, is integration, integration that will go deeper and deeper. And the last one is competitivity, because 
de plus en plus compétitifs. We will be and we will become more and more competitive. Those countries who are not yet competitive will catch up with those who are already. We will have to help them, of course, and we will do that. And once we will have converged, the whole Eurozone will be a very competitive zone. I know that uh, we steered some fears around the world. Why? Because for the time being, we are at about European Union weights at about 30% of the world economy. So when we have issues, it very quickly becomes an issue for the world economy. My message is very clear. We know that. We are aware of it. We took the decisions that needed to be taken. We are extremely determined. We have a long record of good practices and do not count on Europe to disintegrate and disappear from the scene. Not only will we save the euro, but we will become one of the most competitive areas worldwide. So what happened during that night? I saw already the title of the Financial Times, Veto of David Cameron. That's not how I perceived it. We would have preferred a treaty refounding the European Union with 27 members. We have common institutions, the Commission, Court of Justice, European Parliament. But uh, this would have meant that everyone be ready to adhere to those five words I just gave to you. And there was no price to be paid because uh, the survival of the euro and the interests of all of them, including Great Britain, is uh, there is an opt-out clause. UK, Denmark are not within the euro, but when the eurozone needs to integrate, they cannot veto that. They cannot put it under certain conditions either. It is important for the euro, for the UK to keep the common market so as to be able to sell financial services. We could not accept an opt-out for the city because this would have harmed the common market. And 17, therefore, decided to continue with a treaty not with 27, but with 17. But we told all our partners, including the United Kingdom, if they want to join, they are very welcome. For the time being, as far as we know, we would most probably be 26. 26 plus six countries that said, as soon as possible for us, we would like to join the Eurozone, so we will support the same movement. And some said, well, we have to consult parliament, national parliaments. So the final result might be an intergovernmental treaty, 26 countries, maybe 23, 24, 25, without the United Kingdom. But if you have the choice of losing or winning, this is the absolute perfect solution. Why? If you negotiate a treaty 27 member states, you have a very, very long procedure. First of all, you need to draft a con and set up a convention, and convention needs to take decisions at unanimity. Then an intergovernmental conference. Then you have the European Council that decides. 
then you have the process of ratification in each member state. But time is scarce, and we need to go ahead quickly. So the fact that we actually have no time for that lengthy procedure, like for the Lisbon Treaty, with all the ratification, some countries was quite difficult. Uh, I refer to the Irish referendum, will allow us to be much, much faster. And this is a key message, a key message. When Angela Merkel and uh, Nicolas Sarkozy said, we want quick results and results as of March or even prior to that date, they knew it would be feasible because it's like an intergovernmental treaty for specialists amongst you, like the Schengen Treaty. We will do that right away with, while associating and including all those who wish to participate. And we started with that work on negotiation on the content on the five key words that I just gave to you. So this is a new Europe that will be on top of the Euro or European Union of the 27 member states, much more determined, much more integrated, absolutely committed to make the Euro a real success, a success even more successful than what it is already. and. We will have a setting into action clause that will allow us to start and continue the process without having or waiting for all the ratifications. If any country, be it Ireland, be it Slovakia, be it any other country, we can go ahead. We will have a clause, it's not still uh, negotiated the wording, the exact wording, that as of a certain number of ratification, automatically this treaty will come into force. And uh, as you know and as you see, these are fundamental decisions that have been taken and uh, that has been a very long, long night. And uh, as you heard and saw, the European Central Bank, of course, keeps its total independence and uh, will lower its interest rate to 1%, allowing all the European banks to borrow without any limits on that level for a period of three years. So with all those measures combined, we expect and hope that not only will investors and markets be reassured, but also will we have the possibility to build this Europe plus, Europe plus with an ambition of building the future together. Uh, thank you very much. I am, of course, ready to answer.